What is up everyone, Nick here, and today we're gonna to be taking another look at my 3D printed Iron Man suit. This is part two in the series where we break down every single thing I did with this suit, how I built it, how it's assembled, etc., etc., etc. And with that being said, we're gonna take a look at the arms as well as the upper torso, which are by far the most complex parts of this suit because they contain all the electronics. If you don't know it already, this suit is jam-packed with a bunch of features like motorized ailerons, a missile launcher, lasers, as well as smoke machines. So before I disassemble this thing, I'm gonna show you all of those in action. So we're gonna take a quick look at the chest piece right away. So I actually 3D printed an entire arc reactor for this thing. This is based off of one of the designs from Iron Man 3. You can't really tell from far away because the NeoPixels are just so bright, but when you get up close you can see all that detail. One of the most, I don't want to say pointless features of this thing, but yeah, I guess it's pointless. <laughs> One of the more low-key features of this suit are these detachable thrusters. So there's a crap ton of magnets behind this thing, including a pin so it doesn't shift, and it just goes right back on, revealing this super cool detail. But one extra feature I added is a tiny LED light with a reed switch. So once these go back on, it gives it this nice blue hue right here. You can't really tell all that much that they're even there, but under certain lighting conditions when it's pretty dark, it's really cool. And if you've already watched part one of this series, you already know that there's a button behind the chin which allows for the faceplate to open and close. Also, in both of the gloves inside of my suit, I have magnets in the thumbs and I have switches that are activated by magnets in the fingers, which allow me to do stuff like this. Voila. So this is a prototype version of the missile launcher I released a few days ago on Thingiverse. So just like in my video tutorial, the missile retracts back into the missile launcher when it closes. And you might also notice if you look up close to the missile, I added tiny little decals on it that say Stark Industries. I ended up finding these on eBay. These are meant to go on scale models and toys. They come in a variety of different sizes. So I got a bunch of them and I added them to the missile for extra authenticity. Moving on to the other arm. In the other form, we actually have a set of laser diodes. The system is quite simple. It's literally just a linear servo mount with a hinge attached to the missile pod. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like a video tutorial on how to build this in the future. And last but certainly not least, we have the ailerons on my back. So not only do the ailerons move, but I also built my own smoke machines to give it an exhaust effect. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to take this thing apart. That way I can give you a breakdown on how everything works. Very first thing we're gonna do is take the head off and then we're gonna take the neck off. Now let's say I were wearing the suit. The first thing we would have to do is unclip the inner forearms to open them. That way we have access to the wires and we can start unplugging everything. Luckily for this arm, everything is connected to a 12 pin connector. So once I unplug that, everything turns off. Then we would have to take the gloves off. You'll notice that there's a little buckle attaching everything. So that just pops off and we can start removing the hand. Next up, we have these shoulder bells, which are attached to a buckle. So we can just unclip that and take it off. Similar to the shoulder bell, we have another buckle, which is holding the arm up. We can unclip that and start pulling everything off. And that's the wire that controls everything that goes down my arm. And now that that's done, we can just set this aside for now. And now we have to do the exact same thing on this arm. Before I show you guys the internals of this thing, I'm gonna show you how the chest and the back come apart. So first off, you're gonna take these bits off. These used to be part of this one big missile pod piece, but I decided to slice these off the STL file to make it easier to attach the chest. So it gives me a little bit more room to work with. Next up, you're gonna take the back piece and the chest and you're just gonna push into it and it should unclip this cabinet latch. Same thing on the other side and then unbuckle the magnets on the sides, just like so. And once all those four are detached, you can just pull the chest away and you'll see there's a giant wire here. That's because all the batteries for the suit are in the chest, or most of them that is. So we can just unplug this. Now the back is completely disconnected. We can move over the chest and lie this down like so. I went ahead and grabbed a spare bar magnet to show you guys how this system works. I have a bunch of these in my suit and they are super strong. The only problem is you can pull these apart fairly easy. So what I decided to do is have them overlap with one another. So this magnet would be on my chest and this one, well, it's on my back, obviously. 
The only way you can remove this magnet is if you pull it away like this. Now, as you might be able to tell from this leftover raft, I used to have the exact same bar magnet system for the top of the chest to attach it. The only problem is these missile pods on the shoulders were in the way, so I couldn't pull the chest away to take it off and it was extremely difficult to do so. So I decided to scrap that. I instead decided to use these cabinet latches. So basically there's a ball joint that goes in here and it clamps around it. And if you push back on it, it springs back out. Thankfully, I decided to design these rafts so I could screw the cabinet latches on instead of gluing them on because on a few occasions, these things have broken on me. I've since fixed the issue that caused them to break so often, but thanks to me adding threaded inserts into the prints, I was able to just screw the broken one off and replace it with a new one in like five minutes max. You might also notice I have these buckles where the back piece meets the chest. These plug into my harness, and this is basically a preventative measure. The very first time I did a test fit on the entire back piece, I stood up straight without the chest on and the back just fell off of me. So these buckles clip into my harness and keep the back on me at all all times. So there's no fear that this might come falling down and just shattering. <laughs> Before we move further along with the back, I want to show you the internals for the chest. First and foremost, we have this arc reactor, which is basically three layers of craft foam stacked on top of each other. And all of these layers allow me to give depth to the NeoPixels. That way they're not stuck right against the diffuser. If you get really, really up close, you can start seeing the individual pixels. But as you move further away, they start becoming diffused as one. And this entire system basically press fits around that plastic ring. So just like so. And then we have the Arduino right here, which controls the NeoPixel light for the arc reactor and both of these little blue detail lights. Next up, we have this giant 30,000 milliamp hour power pack. So there's three different USB cables that plug into it. So one of these powers the light right there and the other two power other things in the suit. And lastly, we have this secondary power pack. This one is exclusively to power the ailerons on my back. You'll notice I have this little board attached to the power pack. This is a Penelope board by Crashworks 3D. This basically keeps the power pack from ever turning off. So as long as this is plugged in, the power pack is always drawing power. That way it'll never turn off. And it's really important because if it ever turns off, I won't be able to activate the ailerons in my back. And I would have to completely undo my suit, unplug this and replug it in just to get another like 30 seconds of power out of it before it turns back off again. Oh, and also I designed little 3D printed mounts to screw in the ball joints for the cabinet latches. And these are also fused into the print. Awesome, now let's get back to, well, Let's get back to the back. So I have this giant piece of craft foam which just protects the electronics and I have these two giant bricks of, uh, I have no idea what kind of foam this is, but it's like super thick, super malleable. The reason why these are there are to protect my shoulders because before I put these in, this tiny strip of plastic was the only thing that was making contact with my body when I had this on. This means I had nearly 20 pounds hanging off my back by these tiny narrow strips of plastic and they just dug into my traps. It was so painful. So these giant blocks of foam just distribute the weight evenly across both of my shoulders and it's much nicer to wear now. But with that out of the way, let's take this piece off. Yeah, it's bad. <laughs> it may look like a total mess because it kinda is. That's because I wanted every single component in this suit to be modular. That way I can take it apart and do whatever I need to. Thankfully, I decided to add labels on most of the wires and the Arduinos, that way I know what's what. So not only do I have two power packs in the chest to power all of this, but I also have four different batteries throughout the whole back. First off, I have this nine volt battery, which is powering the Arduino for the ailerons. The reason why I have a separate power source just for that Arduino is I used to have the Arduino powered by the same power pack that was powering all the ailerons but it would jitter and stutter and it would like constantly flicker on and off. So I decided to have it power completely independently from the ailerons and that solved the issue. Next up, I have two of these batteries which are built in 18650 rechargeable batteries. These are lithium ion batteries and these both power the electronic cigarettes for my fog machines. And finally, I have this 12 volt power pack which is fit snugly between both of the fog machines. This powers both of the air pumps for the fog machines I built. Speaking of which, let's take a quick look at them. So these can come off with just a bit of Velcro. This top also comes off. It slides just like this. And that's why. And this exposes both the air pump and the top of the vape. So this can come off. It attaches with magnets. 
and this allows you to fill up the vape with uh, the fog fluid. So if you guys are at all interested in a video tutorial on not only how I built the fog machines, but how I control them via Arduino, please let me know in the comments down below. You'll see there are four wires coming off the fog machine. Two of them are for the power, so for the lithium ion battery and the 12 volt battery, and the other two are the wires that control the smoke machine and the pump. Next up, we have this aquarium tube, which snakes all the way back here to a mount I designed in Tinkercad. Not only does this hold the tube in place, but it also holds all the LEDs that you see outside. And behind this whole mess of wires, you can see there are four 20 kilogram torque servos in each corner, which control all four ailerons. I already have a tutorial on my channel explaining how you can build your own back flaps on an Ironman suit, so I'll put that right here. And then most of these wires and Arduinos will make their way to either of these two wires, which go down my arms. So this one would be for the missile launcher and the NeoPixel in my hand. And then this one would be for the switch for the ailerons and also the NeoPixel and the laser in my arm. And I have one last cable sticking out of the back. This attaches to the chest and this is what brings all the power from the chest into the back. Now let's put this back together. And now that we've covered the chest and the back, now we're gonna take a look at the arms. The arms have by far some of my favorite design choices in the suit, but they also have some of the worst design choices. And I'm gonna explain to you why. So right off the bat, the arms are attached via a buckle to the rest of the suit, that way they stay up. And not only does it keep the bicep up, but the bicep is attached to the elbow and the elbow is attached to the forearm, so it's all one piece. So inside the elbow, there's a hole with a screw in it, which screws directly into a piece of plastic I added to the bicep. By including those elastics and hinges in the bicep, it gives me a pretty impressive range of motion. I can touch my head while wearing the suit. I'll include a link to a tutorial by Kiara's workshop, which shows you how to separate your STL files into separate parts. I was going to explain to you how the rest of the forearm works, including the electronics and how it all opens up, but I'm going to be upgrading the arms in the upcoming days because I want to get the suit ready for Level Up Expo in Las Vegas in February. So I'll include a breakdown of how everything works in the next video, as well as how I'm going to upgrade it. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. I'll include links down below to my Amazon shopping cart where you can find all the tools and materials to build this. I'll also include a link to all my social medias, as well as my Ko-fi where you can support me by making a donation. And with that said, I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time.